Talkers and Doers by Keith Large. Excuse me. Come in through. Oops, a daisy. <laughs> Sorry, pal. What's this? A bouncer on the door? Talkers to the left, doers to the right, sir. What the bloody hell's going on? I'm expecting to be at a meeting about a meeting. This'll be your last one, then. After tonight, there's no more free rooms. Well, you mean we've got to stop paying? Your lady in charge has decided. You've got to reach a decision about this tonight. No more meetings after this one? She spent your spare funds on employing me. That's money for our tea and biscuits. Which you won't be needing if there's no more meetings. This is ridiculous. I'm going in there to demand we have a meeting about why there are going to be no more meetings. Uh, Sorry, sir. You can't just walk in there. Do you know who I am? No, because you've not declared whether you are a talker or a doer. I'll be doing some all right when I get in there. That's fine. Now we've established who you are, you can go in. Uh, Just a minute. I need to give you your badge first. I'm not wearing summit that labels me a doer. I hold the club record for vetoing ideas. So now you're telling me you're a talker, are you? Well, what do you think? I work for the civil service. Hmm. Enough said. You're sitting on the seats to the left. Linda! What the bloody hell's going on? Maurice, didn't you get my email? I keep telling you. You've not got my name on the list. Everybody else got it. How do you know? They're not here. (laughs) It's the threat of having to do something. You you can't take action when there's only the two of us. Why not? You can't have a majority decision. Well, don't vote against me then. I've got to. You're sat on the doer's side. Then I'll wait till Jill gets here. Typical. Late again? She has two buses to catch. It's about time she learnt to drive. Well, she says she's going to one day. I all talk. Mm, Speaks the man wearing a badge. I was content to put in it on. That's the first thing I want on tonight's agenda. Why are we wasting money on a doorman who is making vicious threats of no more meetings? (laughs) It's not a threat. A threat is only a threat when it is not carried out. You can't just stop meetings. Mm. For a start, you can't have a vote on an issue without all our members here. Well, if you read the constitution of the Microwave Cookery Club, a motion is allowed to be carried out by the members present. Only if there's a majority. There will be when Jill gets here. I shall be contacting all the members after tonight about this. (laughs) Well, at least you'll be doing something for once. I never joined this class to do anything. Once I saw you were a cookery club without a cooker, I thought you were my cup of tea. Not anymore. I found us a large kitchen. How many microwaves has it got? Mm, That's another thing. I'm changing the name of the club. You what? Uh, Well, the microwave makes us sound so... lazy. We are. We're not. We're going to start doing some cooking. Are you mad? You'll have members leaving in the drawers. Well, that's the idea. We're looking for a new type of member, one that actually wants to cook. What's brought this on? I thought we were all happy turning up for two hours on a Tuesday night, talking about anything but cooking. (sighs) Maurice, there are only so many dishes from a Chinese takeaway that you can take home saying you cooked yourself. Let's not be too hasty about this. Why can't we have another meeting oh. when everybody's here just to talk it through? Oh, sorry I'm late. Bus driver had to break up a fight on the top deck. Oh. Not schoolboys again? No, he had to drag me off some right bits that tried to nick my iPhone. Uh, Well, you've not missed anything. Yes, she has. And this is what does me about people who are late. We have to listen to everything we've discussed fucking repeated again. Mm. Calm down, Maurice. Maurice. (laughs) What's got you in a mood? Oh, he's got to cook. 
Oh, catches up with us all in the end. That's the risk of joining a cookery club. Inevitable one day you'll have to get your up going. <laughs> Not if you vote against it. I can't. Mr Muscles <laughs> on the door gave me a doer badge. I like the idea of having him there. And it keeps the riffraff out. And it's our tea and biscuit fun paying for him. Oh, you won't have time for custard creams when we get you cooking. <laughs> Jill, you can't vote for this crazy idea. You'll never get here on time to get your pounds on. Uh, when's this vote taking place? Now. I'm vetoing it. You can't. I can. No, if you're a talker, you can't. If you were a doer, you can. Hmm. Oh, this. I'm off to the Chinese. Mm. <laughs> Talkers and Doers was written by Keith Large and featured Di Bradley as Morris, <coughs> sorry, Maurice, Emma Grace Ahrens as Linda, Harriet Warner as Jill, and Nick Adams as the doorman. It was recorded at the Soundhouse Studios, London.